remember you are my number one guy. Yes, sir. Before he retired from the world of film in 2010, Jack Nicholson was one of the biggest movie stars for decades with hits, some of which appeared as far back as the 1960s. In the late 80s, he already won two Oscars, and then producer John Peters offered him to play the Joker in the upcoming Warner Brothers film. Of course, we are talking about Batman, one of the first films about DC's superhero, which was an incredible success at the time. Nicholson was then in a position to ask for whatever he wanted, because the studio was willing to do anything to have him appear in a Tim Burton film and give him extra. The actor had experience and assumed that Batman could become a hit. Moreover, in a documentary about the making of the film, he said that he was convinced that Batman would become a cultural phenomenon. I knew it was going to be a big hit, but I also knew they were completely unprepared for the level of success of the film. Said Nicholson, agreeing to cut his then, usual fee of 10 million to 6, but in exchange for a percentage of the profits on cinema box offices. As he predicted, that man opened in the summer of 1989 and became one of the most successful films of all time. It earned $40 million in the first weekend and $411 million by the end of its run, which would be about a billion dollars today. A huge and to many unimaginable success for a superhero movie that literally laid the groundwork for promoting that type of movie. However, despite the success, from WB's perspective the situation was far from great, and some believe that it was Nicholson who was responsible for the failure of Batman. <laughs> With a budget of 35 million, Batman was quite a lavish production, one of the largest in Hollywood history, with sets spread over almost the entire area of Pinewood Studios in Great Britain. Let me tell you about this guy I know, Jack. I like him already. <laughs> Although Nicholson was the biggest star, Kim Basinger Vicky Vale and Michael Keaton Batman were not small fish either, and director Tim Burton already had P. Wee's Big Adventure and Beetlejuice behind him, and was one of the most <laughs> promising new names. Now you get nuts? Come on! Let's get nuts. With all that in mind, it's safe to say that Batman, at the time, was a production that the studio had high hopes for but it doesn't seem to have been overly profitable for Warner even though it made nearly half a billion dollars. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? What? The LA Times wrote in 1991 that two years after its release, the studio recorded a $35, $8 million deficit on this film and that it would probably never turn a profit. Times reporters blamed the expensive promotional campaign and the expensive stars. However, by all accounts, the studio should have made money nonetheless, but this is Hollywood, and there is something colloquially called creative accounting. Believe it or not, movie studios often go out of their way to make sure their movies don't make a profit. At least not on paper. Entertainment Weekly calls a Hollywood's unique approach to accounting, meaning the studio will go to great lengths to make it look like it didn't make any money. On the most popular movies, the main trick is that they pay their own companies for services such as distribution and marketing to make it appear that they spent more than they really did. This became clear on the example of the film Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix from 2007, which was a huge hit and earned $940 million. The charges surfaced online, and those in the know noticed an interesting spell, which in this case was not Potter's. Warner, in fact, paid himself to $112 million for distribution and other costs of the film, and in addition, he spent another $130 million for advertising, which was probably also done by various departments of Time Warner. In other words, the fifth Harry Potter film is officially a flop on which Warner lost $167 million. In short, if the profits officially do not exist, then they do not even have to share them with people whose contracts would significantly reduce their profits. <laughs> As for Batman, Warner earned $251 million domestically alone, but they did everything to make the movie seem like a flop. 
more than $80 million were spent on distribution, and an additional $62.4 million were spent on advertising and marketing. To remind you, Warner probably paid that money to himself. There are also standard costs such as printing, editing, dubbing, and subtitling. In addition, $53.5 million unto the actors, screenwriters, and camera crew, and almost $10 million to other taxes, customs, and the like. All this ends up being around $200 million, of which only $50 million remain. And that's where Warner made a mistake. That remaining amount was recorded before they paid the other expenses, the reason being that multiple people associated with the film had a profit-sharing clause in the contract. In other words, the producers and Burton were to receive a percentage of the total earnings before expenses were deducted. More specifically, Warner should have paid the director, Keaton, and the producers before starting their classic accounting wizardry. Nicholson, in addition to the success of the film, also predicted all these classic Hollywood scams and ended up with one of the most lucrative jobs in Hollywood history. In addition to the agreed $6 million, he secured 15% of the total earnings. And this percentage could rise to 20% if the film earned more than the amount specified in the contract. In short, Nicholson earned at least 50, and Sun even claimed $90 million for his role. Of course, only stars of Nicholson's caliber could get away with such contracts, but it's a tactic that many actors later used. Although Nicholson rode over Warner, the old swindlers did everything to cover the unexpected expenses. After the film was released, there was also the problem of a legal tussle with the original owners of the screen rights, Benjamin Nelnicker and Michael E. Ulan, and the producers, John Peters and Peter Guber. But in this case too, Warner made sure that another situation with Nicholson did not happen. Again, profits from film, related products, and licensing probably covered the losses in the end, and Nicholson is probably still making royalties today and enjoying retirement. Thank you for watching and see you next time.